this is a mess. It's a mess that we've gotten ourselves into both and of the supply chain. I'll continue to talk about the supply chain. There are publishers and then there are customers. And there are things in the environment and technology that over the last 30 plus years, and I've been in it about 35 years, believe it or not, although I know I look like I'm only 29, that have happened in technology that have caused this mess that we've gotten ourselves into. It sort of turned it, that was, this was me in like 19, I don't know, 1983 or 84, maybe 1989, when software started to become an issue in the technology world. Before that, nobody really cared about software. You know, it was on these big machines that ran, you had an operating system, you had some internal apps, you had some external apps, but nobody really cared about managing it. It wasn't out there, it wasn't all over the environment, it wasn't distributed, there was no such thing as PC. Even in business, there were very few personal computers. So if you think about that, and then you bring yourself in today, you sort of had a paper mess around things, if you thought you had a mess, because there wasn't very much of it. And it wasn't controlled by technology in any way. So just some things that we're going to do for... Are we doing this thing? Okay. <clears throat> we'll give you a little bit of the history, my view of why this happened. And my view comes from a background that went from trying to be a practitioner, to being a sourcing person, to understanding software in its infancy, in technology, to becoming the worldwide practice leader for Gartner Group in the late 90s, for all IT management, to understanding and dealing with both the technological side and the management side of software. So what do you get about the history of why this happened? Why we think in the industry it happened? Some of the prehistoric methodologies that were used. And by the way, the history and the prehistoric still exists today for a lot of companies out there, mm -hmm. both publishers and customers. The demands driving the need for tag. I'm going to give you my little bit of a soapbox on why I'm here. The current observations on the mess. Do we still have a mess? Why do we still have a mess? What can we do about it? What can, how can tagging help us in the future? To get out of the mess. This is a bit lighthearted from a very high level because you're going to hear today from other people that are highly intelligent, very deep into tagging, both from the supply side and from the buy side, know what they're doing, know why they're doing it. This is a kind of setting the stage for the people that are going to come after me. Why do I care about tagging? I believe, and I've been, I'm, I'm not a visionary in a lot of things, but in this industry I've seen things that came I mean, I saw the cloud before the cloud was here five years ago. I saw ASPs before ASPs were here. You could see it coming. Software as a utility. If you're a software person and you love this stuff, you see this stuff coming. I believe that if tagging works, and if this industry adopts tagging, it will change the face of how we distribute, how we buy, and how we manage software in the future. I firmly believe that. I got a little inkling of it and got myself reconnected with Dave Vickett from ISO about two years ago through my Gartner connections. I've been gone from Gartner for 10 years, but I'm still very entrenched in their family. Uh, most of the people who work there used to work for me and they're still friends. And they hooked me up with the working group that was doing the Dash 2 pig design because I was absolutely intrigued by what they were doing. I'm now part of that working group. They're a highly intelligent, highly motivated group of people. And I believe that what they're doing will change the face of the supply chain to software in the future. If it's adopted, and if it works. You hear me saying if. Okay? It's been 50 stages. We've got a lot of dedicated people behind it. There's going to be a lot of effort required to make this work. That being said, <coughs> Let's go on to the history of the mess. Now, I didn't stop picking on the vendor or the publisher first. The reason I did publisher first, I'm going to go to the customer next, is because it's supply and demand, OK? So everybody, how many people in the room have customers? Buyers and software. OK. I want you to take your hat off, and you're now going to turn into the publisher. OK, everybody kind of puts the publisher hat on. I'm in business, OK? I'm in a business that's growing so fast and so big. I started out in 19, 
89. PCs that start to grow all over the place, like farms. Okay? And the workstations now. But now we have these things called PCs, the laptops that people start to walk around with. All right? And on these things, we've had all these wonderful applications, both to run our operations and everything else that are out there, that we can sell to customers, that we develop. And they do these wonderful things. And we have these other competitors that do these wonderful things. All right? We have to keep pace with the way this environment's growing. And we have to do it fast, and we have to do it fast, and we have to get it to market. Because if we don't, we're not a business. We're out of business. Okay? We're all in business to make money. That's the way it works. So let's develop it. Let's do some testing and worry about the kinks after we distribute it. Because some of us don't have the development money to worry about every single kink in the code that might be in our software. All right, so let's get it out there. And then in the beginning, let's develop the next best brilliant idea in our garage or in our little tiny office with three people who are brilliant developers. And we know this is going to be the best product. And mind you, the oracles of the world may have started like this. All right, this is not the smallest of the vendors. This is the way it started. Let's develop it in the garage. And then, as it grows, we can sell it. Somebody else, somebody bigger will come and buy. Well, this is where the mess really starts next. Let's be a bigger, bigger player. And let's gobble up these little players <coughs> to complement our suites, or our competitive suites to ours, so we can streamline the industry. And let's kind of monopolize the database. Let's kind of monopolize the other type of apps that businesses are out here, okay? How do you spell monopoly? Well, the issue with software management and tag use, software identification, is while you're doing this fast and furiously, you as the publisher, okay, cannot keep pace with all of that activity. The name of the products, the versions, the releases. You're going to hear a lot of that today. I'm not even going to go through it. I'm going to say it, but I'm not going to go drill down on. So therefore, you have to integrate different inventory systems, different accounting systems, different names of products, bundles that the other vendor has. And you're doing this really, really fast. So this is why, one of the history of why we're out there, OK? Yeah. In the meantime, we want to integrate these suites with our suites. So we're going to change the name of the product the acquired company. So now, publisher put on the customer tag. The customer's sitting out there, they had both company products, you acquired another one, you changed the name of that product. And the customer has no way of keeping pace with this because it's happening fast and furious. Your billing systems have to adopt it. You have old licenses that were out there with your other customers under the old name of the product that you have to integrate. Maybe you integrate them, maybe you don't. So now you've got some naming stuff starting to really go on here, OK? And let's bundle some of these products and sell them as a bundle, but sell them separately under the old things that we sold. And under the new things we sold, we can sell them as a bundle, or we can sell them separately as well. I mean, think about your internal publisher's inventory systems. How do you keep track of that from a product? You don't. Okay? So this is a publisher's dilemma. In order to stay competitive as a publisher, this is the dilemma you face. Let's change the version thing sequences. Let's go from version 5 in 2005 to version 2005 for the same product. How do you systems adopt to the version 5 is the same thing as version 2005? And when did it become version 2006? Well, maybe it's 2004 and it's made 2005 from version 4 and 2005 and version 5. I mean, it's all over the place. Let's get the products out to the marketplace through as many channels as we possibly can. And we don't have time as a publisher to vet those channels. So we don't have time to say, oh, my reseller's got it under control. They had him, they had cataloging system is great. Their numbering system is great. So now you got a whole new set of numbers for your product going out there being pushed out to the marketplace. Or, you know, my distributor in China 
who's the only distributor of this software that we can use, is great. They've got their act together. They know exactly what they're doing. They've mapped their identification number to my identification number as a publisher. So my original number maps to their sales number. That goes straight out there to the customer. And the customer will never be confused. They're going to be happy. Further the confusion. OK. Let's change the licensing model for the same product based on new computing environments. The cloud, okay, I have this product, I sold it to a customer a certain way two years ago, now the entire computing environment has changed and I need to sell it to a customer a different way. And I got to keep track of how that customer is dealing with that sale and that computing environment. Is it my responsibility as a publisher to keep track of that? Maybe not. But if I decide I have to go in and do a customer audit, I have to have control. I have to know about that part. I have to understand it. I have to understand how I license it. Remember, you don't buy software unless you develop it. Customer licenses software, licenses the right from a publisher who is the owner of the software. Let's allow the marketing team to sell custom bundles. This is a fun. I mean, I, we have publishers out there. I'm sure you love your marketing guys that go out there. They just made the greatest deal with the biggest company in North America, and I sold them a custom bundle. Okay, your licensing and accounting teams want to vomit when they get out. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, how am I going to? And you know, a just for you special ABC <coughs> product. And it's like, what is this product? Well, it's a mix of X and Y and Z and the bundle and the other bundle. Very difficult for a publisher to keep track of it. Okay, so let's confuse ourselves and the customer with the goal of increasing our revenue. These are businesses. If they went out of business and you're a customer, and I'm appealing to the customers in the room to understand their side of the equation, you'd be in trouble. Because you need this software. You're embedded in the software. You can't get off this software in many cases. You know, to say to somebody, oh, I'm getting off your software, that's a relational database, is not an easy comment to make as a customer. So therefore, why don't we just confuse ourselves, which we've just done, not by our own fault in many cases, and why don't we confuse the customer and start to cause the mess? Well, this is a two-sided story. The customers have had great, how many of you now are publishers here? OK, put your hat on, OK? You're now the user. This technology is great. I love it. I've got to have it. I need to have 23 different reporting systems on a mainframe. How many people now were even here around when we do a mainframe? OK, a few. When I was in a mainframe situation, we actually did an analysis once and realized that we had 24 different reporting tools producing 24 different reports from the same data. Because one guy liked one tool. Have you ever tried, if you were ever in a mainframe situation or even in any situation, have you ever tried to say, we're going to streamline all these tools with the same functionality into one? It becomes a holy war in the customer's site. There is one person that will never give up that tool. Okay, so rapid growth, <coughs> changes in computing, and the fact that we like these new technologies, we got to keep pace with our competitors. Buy, 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 buy. Let's buy. Hurry up. Let's buy it. Let's buy it. Let's buy it. Let's buy it. Hurry up. Okay, and let's buy it. Let's install it, and worry about the entitlement and management of the license afterward. Well, this won't get out of control. It'll be fine. And okay, that's what they all thought. This will be fine, okay? And let's distribute it across the enterprise and not worry about where it goes after the distribution. That's for the technology folks, okay? That's for the guys, you know, that's for the propeller head guys in my shop that, you know, they have to worry about where it goes after the distribution. Most importantly, they have to worry about if it works. Oh, my health desk knows every time John or 
Sue or whoever calls them exactly what they have and exactly what configuration it is, and exactly <coughs> what they put on it, including the PlayStation program. They know. Let's worry about that later because of rapid growth. And on the flip side of the equation, I'm in business to make money. Most of the time I'm a commercial entity. And let's grow through acquisitions. Same problem as the publisher. Now they've got not necessarily only a monopoly, but they've got total complexity. All right? Same exact problem on the flip side. First one's a big one. Let's not worry about normalizing the names of the licensed product in the catalog. You go to any company with, I'm going to say 2,000 or more employees, probably 1,000 or more, that's how scary the size it is, it's so small. And you task them from requisition to retirement, does the software have the same name? If you look in records, you will see one piece of software, one version, have multiple, multiple, multiple names. This is because nobody was worrying about normalization on the inside. They weren't thinking about it. They didn't realize what was going to happen with the expansion of product and change on the publisher side. Let's not worry about the bundling run problem, bundling and how it affects our software portfolio. I know I have Adobe here. I'm going to give you an example. And I'm sure you understand. <laughs> They bought a company named Macromedia. Okay, Flash was one of the products. If you bought Flash from Macromedia back when, and they had a license to Macromedia, you had a license for Flash, and an old version of Flash. Now you've got CS products, and Flash is part of some of those CS products, which is Creative Suite. Nothing to do with Flash. If you didn't know any better, you wouldn't know Flash was in it, unless you bought it. Okay? But I'm a customer. I don't have any mapping between Flash and CS4 and which one I have and what CS4, that CS4 is really five products and maybe one of them is sold separately and, well, yeah, I have Flash, so I must have CS4. This is the type of Cavalier customer buying that goes on out there, people requisition things. Let's not keep track of the fact of vendor acquisition. I don't know that Adobe bought Macromedia. My internal still, still says Macromedia. That's who the vendor is. And then somebody goes back, oh, they bought them three years ago. Happens all the time in the custom community. And on the flip side, let's trust that our reseller and our distributor has got their act together. Okay? And that their management practices are good. You know, they represent XYZ Publisher, which is a very large publisher in our enterprise deals. They must know exactly what they do, and they must be the experts. They must know how to manage software better than I do, so let's just let them do it, because that's part of what I pay them for. Part of the contribution to a real mess. Some assumptions that were made. <clears throat> let's not worry about whether you can track and manage computing and change licensing models. We've sold the cloud, we're going to get the cloud. How does it affect my licensing? How does it affect my old stuff? How does it affect my new stuff? How does it affect going backwards, going forward? Let's just get the computing out there. We've got to be there. We've got to be doing what everybody else is doing. It's very important to us. Custom bundle licensing is good because I'm special. I'm really special. I'm a deal maker at a custom shop. I do deals. I don't worry about managing those deals. I do the deals. And I'm special. And if they give me a product that has my name on it, even if I can't track it, and I'll never know what it is, I'm special. It's very common with custom bundling. And I can't track it most of the time. And then let's worry about tracking it after we made the deal, not before. Let's not understand the software before we buy it. So let's handle. Add complexity to an environment that you absolutely cannot handle. <coughs> okay. The past is really the present. And some of these prehistoric methodologies, <coughs> grassroots efforts, are now existing. We are in a prehistoric age still. I've been in software management 
20 years, I said, I cannot understand for the life of me how this didn't pick up and become the hottest thing on earth for 22 years. And it's not. Nobody cares about it. Very few companies look at it. It costs a lot of money. It's a lot of revenue to a publisher and a lot of cost to the customer, both sides of the supply chain. However, these methods still exist. But if you go back into the history of software management and some of the things to manage software products, there are attempts by startup SAM tool companies to develop best practices for SAMs, say, for software asset management and catalogs. This formed a whole group of people, some of them very small, some of them the larger enterprises, to go out and sell tools to try to manage this stuff, create their own libraries, their own catalogs. So let's add that into the complexity, or the trying to solve the complexity with an environment that they totally didn't understand either. People didn't find it sexy, they didn't find it pretty, they still don't. So a lot of these companies got their tools bought. A lot of companies have six, seven, eight, nine, ten discovery tools alone for identification, and they still do. Many of these companies went out of business because they couldn't sustain the business model in this small marketplace. Uh, there have been attempts by some customers to standardize internal catalog data and process them from requisition to requirement. Anybody in the room have that nailed? Oh, oh, oh you know, the phrase get no left. Okay? So, you know, you've got the complexity around software that somebody requisitioned something through a system, purchases something through a system, and then or, or on the publisher side, they develop it, they distribute it, then they invoice for it. And all of these systems are like some of them are legacy, some of them are commercial, none of them talk to one another. You've got to kind of put together with post-it notes and paper clips in the middle. And if you look at the end to end, in many environments, that's what you see. There are some customers that have tried to solve that end to end. And they come to the conclusion that something has to be unique from the beginning to the end. That's why you need to do that. On the publisher side, same issue. The invoices are all over the place. Their accounting side spends a lot of money and a lot of time trying to work it out with customers if they track the invoices and they decide something's not right with that invoice. End to end, the systems don't work, from the marketing to the distribution to the invoice. And there are futile attempts by most of the resellers to be SAM practitioners. There still are some of them out there that will tell you they're SAM practitioners, that they can help you do all of this, that they have some rudimentary tools to do it. It's very, very primary. I don't think they're going to continue to stay in that business because it's not their primary business. Resellers are resellers, they resell software and they take a small percentage of that and they give you some services combined with that. We have discovery and repository tools out there. I still think they're in their infancy stages. Um, Lots of them because of, if you trace the history of the old Peregrine tool, anybody remember Peregrine? Greatest company on earth, made all that money, built those five big buildings in California, went bust. I think HP bought it for like $400,000 or something. Took all the real estate, there it went, okay? But a lot of people bought the suite, okay? So they are discovery, and a repository tool. HP bought them, threw a few pieces together. We're from other companies that HP bought. HP now has a discovery tool that came from one company, a repository tool that came from another company. So you've got the same type of confusion going on in the tools to manage that software identification at this point. And then you've got the reseller catalogs. If you've got a reseller in your environment, the catalog is just not in line with the supply, which is the publisher, and the demand, which is the customer. You've got this middleman catalog sitting out there as far as identification. The drivers. There's no such thing as standard data in current software environments. 
There's no such thing. The translations of the names, the versions, the license types, the platforms vary based on where the data card came from and who's mapping it. Whether it be the publisher, whether it be the customer, what company it originally came from, what company it went to. So there needs to be through, true authentication for a lot of reasons. I mean, these are just a few of them. I mean, to solve some of these issues that we're sitting out here with. <clears throat> Facilitating more effective software lifecycle management is no longer nice to have. We've got an industry of contention at this point. We don't have a community. See, we talked about community. The industry of contention is that software customers and software vendors don't necessarily love one another. And that's a bad relationship in supply chain. All right? They're trusting and relationship oriented. They're friends. They're cordial. But they're not necessarily really trusting one another. Okay? So I think effective lawful software lifecycle management and beginning by tagging and doing that is going to help that relationship. It's no longer nice to have. We have to solve this industry issue, and it's an industry issue for everybody. We need to demystify and improve the relationships, as I just said. Customers become more sophisticated in their asset acquisition strategies. Okay. Software assets have not kept place in a lot of customer shops. You see a lot of turnover now on their deal people, on their sourcing people. The high level management is no longer satisfied with what they're looking at from a sourcing standpoint. The businesses that are involved in saying this isn't profitable for me. We're spending too much on software and have to stop. So the entire ecosystem has to get their act together from a life cycle standpoint. And purchasing systems and purchasing people in the environment are no exception to this. Current observations. Although many deny the mess, it still exists. I had a debate with a friend at Gartner on this, who said, oh, we talk to people all the time. They tell me we're a mess. I don't believe it. You go to upper management in a publisher, or you go to a CEO in a software, and you say, in a, in a customer, and you say, is your software portfolio more a mess? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We know exactly what we're doing. There are all these people working on it, all this time and effort spent. Our licensing people are great, all five of them, by the way. Most publishers' organizations, the licensing groups are really small. So they're like pulling the hair out of their head every day trying to figure out this mess. All right? On the customer side, oh, no. Our IT staff has it in order. They know where everything is. They know every component of a piece of software. They know exactly what it is. We're fine. Both publishers and customers are still struggling with the mess. Resellers and others still add more complexity to the mess. And continued acquisitions will continue. So if we don't stop the bleeding, today is going to be history of the mess next year the year after. Too much time, money, and effort spent on this mess. And it's all hidden costs. If you did a cost analysis, and I've done a few for customers who decided to throw it in the garbage bill because they said, I, I couldn't show this to somebody, they killed me. So please don't do this again. But it's a great experiment, okay? The people time and the effort and the tools, and the multiple tools, in trying to deal with a piece of software that has a name, a version, a release, a platform, and a license type. I'm going to keep it really simple here. Those four things is enormous because of the complexity. The mess continues to call the groundswell of ill feelings, as I said. It still is not a trusting marketplace because everybody's in a mess, everybody's upset about it, both sides of the supply chain. And we have to slow the acceleration of this. Okay? Because if we don't, it's going to continue to be a mess. And it's just going to get more costly and people are going to be more frustrated. And upper management starts to get really frustrated over this, heads start to turn. People turn over, they bring new people in, and then the mess starts all over again. Who should 
you. Getting ourselves out of the mess through TIG. Only through standard data set for the certified, accurate, complete can the mess begin to be cleaned up in the future. Okay? Don't fool yourselves, publishers and customers, into thinking that you can go back in history. So audits will continue, as Steve said, for historical data. Okay? And there will be inconsistencies in that data. It is unwise to think that you can go back and clean up historical and start from there and then worry about going forward later. We really need to start looking into the future when it comes to taking and cleaning up what we can do for the future. And then go back with historically if you think it's fruitful to do that for your organization based on the size and scope and how many products you're looking at as a publisher or a customer. <clears throat> Dealing with future computing distribution licensing models, the cloud, virtual machines, okay? DM has been around a long time, guys. Outsourcing has been around a long time. ASP has been around a while. Inscription licenses have been around a while. They have a whole new level of complexity, which is what the cloud's going to do. The tag, because <coughs> it's outside of your control. So if you don't have control inside right now, now you're pushing it outside. And once again, if you think the people on the outside have control, it begins. Right? It will be the next mess, and it will be a big one. And it'll probably come and it'll go as an experiment, because I've seen these come and go before within X number of years if we don't deal with it. And Scott mentioned that you're going to hear a lot about this. Software tagging and tracking, the identification of software, will have a lot to do with streamlining distribution, streamlining cache tracking, security tracking, help desk, and all those internal things that companies on both sides spend a lot of money and time on. So now I think I kind of just cut your cost, which means helping the supply chain through kids, not hindering it. Because if I'm cutting your cost, I know people have heard this, nobody believes it, but it's true. If you run a business, for every dollar saved, okay, it's equivalent to two dollars that you sell of whatever it is you sell. So therefore, it's a big, big plus that you can streamline your operations. Final thoughts, I want to give you my resume. I don't want to shoot, but I am an old lady. I'm probably the oldest living female in Sam. Hey, you're 29. Like somebody's older? You're only 29, remember? Well, I started when I was two. She looks like she's 29. <laughs> she looks like she's 29. Oh, John, stop it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be nice to Dash 3 because of that. Oh. <laughs> um, I probably am the only, I, I actually, I actually think I almost started Sam. Uh, I was in a small banking organization called City Bank in 1989, and we fell into this thing called software management, I came out with this thing called the triangle. Oh, what is software management, how does it work? And then I, when I went to Gartner, I drew the triangle, and then they kind of, copyrighted it, it became Gartner's Triangle. So I've never seen anything on Sam since that triangle story, so I haven't seen anything before that. So I'm thinking I'm probably the oldest person in Sam, or one of the oldest people in Sam. I dealt with the mess for longer than I'd like to remember. My kids nicknamed for me, I have two sons, late 30s, they don't call me mom, they call me nails. They love me to death, but I'm a little bit crazy. That's why I dealt with the mess, okay? I love it. Love every minute of it. Love murder mysteries, love puzzles. You either love this or you hate it. It's a mess. I make money out of the mess. I'm one of those people in the supply chain that once we clean up the mess, it's probably not going to make a heck of a lot of money. But I do believe that this industry has to be changed and that we have to clean up this mess. Even if it hurts me, we've got to clean it up. It's just, it's a mess. And software messes are my favorite thing. 
but I'm tired of being a clean one. That's what I do for a living. I help people clean up messes. Publishes, I've done publishes, and I've done customs. All right? I liken this to cleaning toilets. How many people like to clean the toilet? <laughs> I mean, you really don't like to clean the toilet. So, gotta get rid of the mess. That's why I'm qualified to talk about this. Final thoughts. Tagging will assist in the future after it's by both. It will demystify the software environment, which is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. It'll end the mystery. Okay? It'll affect all aspects of the life cycle. Purchasing systems, requisition systems, internal catalogs, beginning catalogs, repositories on the back end. Now, the controversial thing is that there's a part, okay, and I only have, Steve keeps giving me a thing that says 10 minutes. I look like I have 10 minutes, but I probably have two minutes left. And I never end late, because here he is. For every minute you go over, they give you a worse grade on those evaluations. <laughs> Never go over, okay? Um, there's a pie, if you think of a pie. I'm not going to go to the whiteboard, but envision a pie. You've got supply and demand. That represents maybe 70 to 80% of the pie of revenue that is spent on this mess right now. Spent on software. And I'm talking publisher to customer. How would a publisher and customer feel if they were one-to-one? -one? And they could take out that other 25, some of that 25% of the pot. People like me that help people solve the mess. There'll always be people for me to solve the mess. <coughs> but I don't want to the whole world. And there will be other companies that will be put out of business when Tagging comes into play. It will not, in my view, be the publisher, and it will not affect the customer adversely in any way. The customer will be more streamlined, the publisher will get more revenue. They'll like each other better. Trust me, it can work. Because there's too many middlemen in the equation right now. And it will change the way Sam's done in the future. I firmly believe that Teddy will change this environment. So how long do you think it'll take to clean up the mess industry? How many years? I really think that if it gets adopted, um, if it becomes, if it penetrates 20, 30 percent of the portfolios, either through customer or publisher, and you start by going forward and don't worry about the mess going backwards, because that's going to be really hard to like get a taxonomy on, I would think it's probably going to take two to three years. I give it three years because the software management businesses, software management is a crazy thing, and software is a crazy thing. So is technology. We all know. Get the three years, we get sick of it. I mean, even IBM changes their mind yet for three years of what they're going to do next. And they're a big boat to turn around on Microsoft. Or, you know what I'm saying? So I give it three years that if it's adopted. And if you have any other questions, write them down. I'll be around all day. And I'll turn it back to Steve.